First now at noon, new videos showing the family members of those who lost their lives inside the Tree of Life Synagogue arriving at the federal courthouse. Good afternoon, I'm Christine Sorensen. Opening statements are underway in the Pittsburgh Synagogue shooting trial, a trial that's expected to last at least two months. Andy Sheehan joins us live from outside the federal courthouse with what's happened so far. Andy. Christine, the government opened the trial with a brutal retelling of the massacre at the synagogue and said it would spare the jury no detail as this trial moves forward. Opening, government prosecutor Sue Song described the three congregations gathering that Saturday morning in the sanctity and refuge of their shared space, describing in detail their arrival and preparations for worship, each one by name, describing them as the most devoted and faithful members of each. Then the arrival of the defendant, armed with an arsenal, three Glocks and an AR-15, determined to, quote, destroy, to kill, and defile. He hated Jews. He called them the children of Satan. He wanted to fire up the ovens and exterminate them all. Once he entered the synagogue, the defendant began to hunt. In horrific and painstaking detail, she described the killing of each, each shot at close range as most try to hide or seek cover. Six shot in the head, most all shot multiple times. Through it, the defendant betrayed no emotion, but some family members of the victims began to weep. Quote, he left a trail of death and destruction through the synagogue, victims on the ground clutching their prayer shawls, praying to God, then telling the jury, we will seek justice in the name of the deceased victims. And again, she recited their names. Then to the apparent surprise of the jury, defense attorney Judy Clark began her opening by readily admitting the defendant was responsible for the carnage, calling his actions immeasurable and inexcusable. Quote, this senseless act and devastation was caused by Robert Bowers. There is no disagreement. So you may be looking at me right now and say, why are we here? She said in this phase of the trial, she would have little to say to the prosecution's witnesses. But in the next phase, she would talk about her client's, quote, motive and intent, why he did what he did and what he thought he would accomplish. Now, the government has called its first witness, 911 dispatcher Shannon Abel, who took the first call. Coming up in our later shows, we will have her testimony and others with full reports. For now, reporting live at the U.S. Courthouse downtown, Andy Sheehan, KDK News. Thank you, Andy. Now, some new rules for this trial, and they're in place to protect and limit the release of certain sensitive details. That includes 911 calls, where you can hear gunshots in the background, autopsy photos, and scene photos involving the victims. The victims' family members ask that the court protect the memories of their loved ones, including how they're portrayed in death. The materials will still be made available in open court and will be used during testimony, but those details and evidence will not be posted on the court's website or made available to the public in any way. Now, if you or someone you know is experiencing trauma from the trial, there are resources available. You can call the Pittsburgh Crisis Hotline at 1877. I'm sorry, let me say that again, 1888 7 you can again that's 1-888-796-8226 or you can also contact the 1027 healing partnership all their programs are offered at no cost